There are two parables in our gospel reading for today. The parable of the wedding feast and the parable of the wedding garment. But because of time limitation, allow me to share with you a few thoughts only about the first parable, the parable of the wedding feast. The gospel reading, the parable of the wedding feast, is sometimes called the parable of the wedding banquet invitation or it is called the parable of the disobedient guests of the banquet feast. This parable is narrated only in the Gospel of Matthew. You will not read this parable in the three other Gospels. In the parable of the king inviting the guests or the wedding feast, the king in the parable is the figure of God. The wedding feast is a popular Jewish image for the joy of the life to come, like life with God in heaven, salvation in Christ, eternal life. The first parable, the parable of the wedding feast, compares the kingdom of God to a wedding banquet, a wedding feast. The king says, come to the feast. Everything is ready. But for various reasons, the guests rejected the invitation. They declined the invitation. They snubbed. They refused the invitation because there are more important things they have to do in life. Those who were invited ignored the invitation. They went away, one to his farm, another to his business. One was too busy to come, he went to his farm. The other was too busy working for a living, he went to his business. What is one lesson that we can learn from this narration? There are people who are fond of making alibis or excuses. Alibis and excuses. I have no time for this. I have no time for that. I am too busy. But anybody will always say he has no time for something that he is not interested in. I remember a saying in Filipino that goes, Kung gusto, may paraan. Pero kung ayaw, ay maraming dahilan. My dear brothers and sisters, let me cite a few examples. The wedding feast represents the only important thing in life. The mistake of those who rejected the invitation is that, listen, they abandoned the important in favor of the urgent. They left the essential in favor of the contingent, neglecting the important in favor of the urgent in the spiritual life means continually putting off or canceling our religious and spiritual duties because apparently there is always something we feel is more important and urgent calling for our attention. Example, it is Sunday. It is time to go to Mass. But there is that party. There is that meeting. There is that beach outing. There is that deadline. There is that report. There is that lunch to prepare. There is the house to clean. Alibis, excuses. The Mass is dropped in favor of another activity that may actually be less important. My dear brothers and sisters, the danger of neglecting the important in favor of the urgent is also present in the human sphere, in our everyday life. It is of primary importance, for example, that the man of the house dedicates regular time to his family, 
Be with these children, talk to them, watch them grow up, play with them if they are little. But then, at the last moment, there are always urgent things to deal with in the office, extra things to do at work, and he puts it off until another time, returning home too late or too tired to think about anything else, alibis, and the lamest excuses. In the end, parents do not know their children, and children do not know their parents. Another example, it is also important for anyone to go very so often to visit an aging or a sick father or mother or relative or friend, living alone or at home only with a helper. It may be important to visit them, but it is not urgent. And we postpone, we procrastinate, we forget, we don't care. Another example, the same is true in regard to our health, which is also something equally important. We know that health is wealth. The doctor says that you need to take care of yourself, take time to rest, avoid stress, exercise, right diet, get the right amount of sleep, regular checkup. And then you tell the doctor, yes, yes, doctor, I will definitely do it. Just as soon as I am done with this or that project, I will do it when I retire. I will do it when I have paid off all my debts until you realize that it is too late. The doctor's prognosis, stage four, and you panic. And there are many other examples. So the parables today, today, they are like a school of life. The two parables today teach us to examine our priorities, to attend to what is essential, to give priority to the important more than to what is urgent, and to not lose the important for the sake of the urgent. Is God a priority in my life? Is the spiritual life one of my top priorities? Is there a real hunger for God in my life? I end with a quote from Psalm number 63. O oh God, you are my God, for you I long. For you my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. And so I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. Amen.